Hi Seals, welcome back. Um, we are on chapter 11. Um, so Tilly thought that she maybe was was imagining. Whoa, sorry, no, not from my desk over. Um, having a nightmare. Uh, Tilly thought that she was imagining the um, characters, um, but then she got home and Alice was waiting for her in her lounge room, I think it is. Okay, chapter 11, try to make a little more space for the impossible to happen. Tilly stopped short. Alice? Yes, Alice said impatiently. It's very rude to forget someone so quickly after you first met them, you know. No, Tilly protested. I haven't forgotten you. I just, I started to wonder if you were really, well, real. Why? It's even ruder to question if someone is real. Alice leaned across and pinched Tilly lightly on the arm. Ow! yelled Tilly. What did you do that for? To prove I am real, obviously, Alice retorted. But it's impossible, Tilly said in frustration. I used to be very similar to you, Alice said, patting Tilly on the arm where she had just pinched her. But so many out of the way things happened to me that I began to think that very few things are indeed really even possible. I know a woman who spoke a lot of nonsense most of the time. It has to be said. But she once told me that, the, that she sometimes believed as many as six impossible things a day and all before breakfast. So nowadays I try to make a little more space for the impossible to happen. Alice attempted to give Tilly a moment to take in everything she said, but couldn't contain herself. Anyway, do you want to come to a tea party or not? You said yourself that you want to be more curious. Tilly looked up and steeled herself. Why not? How much stranger could things get? Alice bounced excitedly next to her and held out her hand. Tilly shrugged and took hold of it. All at once, Pages and Co. seemed to divide to divide into a grid of tiny tiles that click-clacked over each other like a wooden toy folding down on itself. So I'll show you the illustration. Oh, let me see. In, in only a few seconds, the whole shop has dominoed down and seemed to wind itself in under Tilly and Alice as if pulled to them by a very powerful magnet. Tilly's stomach dropped like the moment you go over the top of, ro of a roller coaster and there was a smell of marshmallows toasting on a bonfire. Instead of the familiar bookshop, Tilly and Alice were standing in a colourful forest with a thatched house tucked into the trees and a long table set out in front of it. At one end of the table sat a large hare in a bow tie. Hare's the rabbit. A dormouse who seemed to be asleep and a man wearing a rather mad looking hat. Oh, you were talking about this tea party, Tilly said queasily. Alice nodded merrily. Welcome to Wonderland. It's always tea time here. Let me introduce you, she said, skipping over to the table. And please don't mind them if they are a little rude until they get to know you and quite likely for a while after that as well. Tilly followed Alice to the table not quite believing that she could feel the grass under her feet and touch the wooden chair she was about to sit down on. No room, no room, the hare shouted, and Tilly felt a strange sense of deja vu. Was this the exact same, the exact scene from the book she had read so many times? Why, there's plenty of room, Alice said sternly. We've been over this before. Oh, my dog's back. Okay, welcome up. Give me one minute. Sorry about that. We've been over this before, she nodded encouragingly at Tilly. Go on, sit down, it's fine. Tilly perched on the edge of the huge squishy cushion covering the chair and smiled nervously at the characters she knew so well who were now staring at her. Would you like some cake? The hatter asked, gesturing at the table that was entirely free of anything to eat and held only teapots and teacups. No, thank you, Tilly said. May I have a cup of tea, please? I'm ever so sorry, but we are completely out of tea. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. Would you like some wine? The Hatter said while pouring himself a cup of tea. I can't drink wine. I'm 11, Tilly said, confused. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, the Hatter replied. How foolish of me. You are far too old to be drinking wine at tea time. Too old? Why, yes, one should have long broken the habit of wine drinking if one is already eleven. Your discipline is commendable, and we shall all be most inspired by it. Some tea, he said. Well, yes, I wanted tea to begin with, Tilly said. 
There's no need to be demanding, the Hatter said, filling up a fresh teacup and then drinking it himself. Do you like riddles? he asked. Not particularly, Tilly started. Wonderful, do tell us some. We love a riddle to ponder over tea. I'm really sorry, but I don't think I know any rid riddles, Tilly protested. Well, make one up, the Hatter said sternly. At that moment, the Dormouse woke up. You stole my better knife, it squawked before going back to sleep. The hare looked expectantly at Tilly as she racked her brains for any riddles. OK, I've got one. What flies without wings, she tried. Easy, yelled the hare, thumbing his paw into the table and making all the teacups dance and rattle. Time, and we don't speak of him around these parts. Next, do try harder than next one. Tilly desperately tried to remember another riddle. How about, what belongs to you, but others use it more than you do? The hare paused and stroked his chin. The dormouse woke again. Teaspoons, he said. Everyone is always stealing my teaspoons. The hare nodded. Yes, teaspoons. These teaspoons belong to me, but are used much more by others and often used not at all properly. He glared at Alice, who was watching the conversation with delight. No, the answer isn't teaspoons, Tilly said a little crossly. The answer is your name. Your name belongs to you, but others use it more than you do. You might as well say that your birthday belongs to you, the Hatter chimed in. You may as well claim your age belongs to you, the Dormouse called. My birthday does belong to me, and so does my age, I think. Oh, I'm not at all sure. But you've shared both with an awful lot of other people, said the Hare. My teaspoons belong only to me, and I would like them back now, if you please, he said, and yanked a teaspoon out of Alice's hand as he spoke. What did you mean when you said you don't speak of time around these parts? Tilly asked, trying to change the subject. The Hatter, the hatter had a bit of a quarrel with time, Alice explained quietly. The Hatter was singing in a concert for the Queen of Hearts, and the Queen accused him of murdering the time, and since then, why time won't help the Hatter out at all. He used to be ever so helpful with getting things straightened out. That's why it's always tea time here. Time has made it stick at six o'clock. At this, the hatter burst into noisy tears. It was such a beautiful song as well. Shall I sing it for you? He looked at Tilly. He wasn't at all sure if she wanted to hear it until Alice kicked her onto the table. Please do, Alice said politely. Yes, I'm sure it's beautiful, Tilly agreed, trying to kick Alice back but instead banging her knee hard on the leg of the table. The hatter wiped his nose with a very frilly sleeve, pushed back his chair and stood until he was surprised to see that he didn't appear much taller when he stood up than he did sitting down. He cleared his throat and began to a tune that sounded remarkably similar to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. And at this point, the Dormouse and Hare both started swaying along and chanting, Twinkle, 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 to no recognisable tune at all. And the Hatter closed his eyes and started humming to himself as the Dormouse fell asleep again. Alice clapped delightfully, Bravo, bravo! Tilly clapped too, a little more hesitantly at the hatter and sat back down. And the hatter bowed and sat back down. Well now, do you know any songs, girl? The hare said to Tilly. Or any stories? He added hopefully. Oh no, I couldn't possibly, Tilly said, shrinking back into her seat. Boring, shouted the hare. Do you know I had heard you were rude? Tilly snapped. But I didn't imagine you would be quite so rude as this. Who told you I was rude? The hare said. What a terrible, ill-mannered thing to say about someone. Was it that grinning Cheshire cat? Oh, no, Tilly said, immediately feeling bad. Maybe I misheard, I'm sorry. Boring! At that, the Dormouse raised his head again. Enough of all this! And anyway, who is that? And does he want any tea? He said, gesturing with a lazy paw. Everyone turned to see a tall man in a grey bowler hat, sitting at the far end of the long table. Tilly's blood ran cold. It was Mr Chalk, the man who had visited Grandad in the bookshop. Why are you here? she asked, but everyone spoke at once and her question was drowned out by the noise. How long have you been sitting there? shouted Alice. Would you like some tea? said the Dormouse. 
You need a haircut, said the hatter. Are you using one of my teaspoons? The hare said suspiciously. Tilly looked at Alice, panicked. Alice, Alice, she whispered, trying to get her attention without the others noticing. Alice, that man was in the bookshop the other day talking to Grandad. What's he doing here? But when she looked up, back up to where Chalk had been sitting, he was gone. Oh, he must be a friend of the treasure cat, Alice said, although I've never seen him here before. I think I want to go home, Tilly said to Alice. Really? But you've only just arrived, said Alice. Yes, really, I really want to go home. Already? Yes, already, if you insist, Alice said, and grasped her hand under the table. This time, everything seemed to happen in reverse. The titles of Pages and Co. folded out from underneath them, stacking upwards as the walls of reality righted themselves around them, blocking out the tea party until Tilly was sitting in the bookshop again. She slumped back against the sofa. Alice, what was that? She said breathlessly, but when she turned to her side, Alice was no longer there. Tilly was not sure how long she had been sitting on the sofa, breathing heavily, when her grandma's voice interrupted her. Tilly, could you come and help with dinner? She shouted up the stairs. Coming, Tilly called, shaking her head, as if trying to dislodge the memory of what had just happened. Are you okay, sweetheart? Grandma asked, as they topped and tail, green beans side by side. You've been out of sorts today. Is whatever bothered you when you went to the shop still playing on your mind? I just had a weird afternoon, Tilly said. I bumped into Oscar and we kind of disagreed about something, and then when I got back here I met some, well... Unusual people. In the book shop, Grandma said, you know you don't have to talk to any customers if you don't want to, and you can come and get one of us or Jack or at any point. It wasn't like that, Tilly said. I kind of knew them already. Grandma frowned. Kind of? Were they from school? You're talking in circles, Tills. It's been that sort of day, Tilly said. Okay, sweetheart, well I'm here if you want to talk about it. Speaking of friends from school, is there anyone you want to invite to the party on Wednesday? Oscar, maybe. Maybe, Tilly said, still smarting from her last conversation with him. Grandma, do you ever feel as if you read books? Like, do you ever feel as if you read books, like more than other people? Well, yes, of course. I read books for my job, so I definitely read more books than lots of people. Although several of our regulars certainly like to tell me about everything I haven't read, she said, carrying on. No, I don't mean more books. I mean... Do you read more intensely, I guess? Like sometimes when you're reading, do you feel like you're really there or something? Grandma turned and looked intently at Tilly just as the phone rang, startling them both. Grandma's knife slipped, catching the tip of her finger. Oh, shoot, she said, grabbing a nearby towel and pressing it onto her finger, which was undramatically but consistently leaking blood. Tilly, I very much want to talk more about this, but right now I need you to quickly go and get me the first aid box from the bathroom. Tilly nodded and went to get the box as the phone rang off. By the time Grandma's finger had been thoroughly cleaned and bandaged, their conversation seemed to have been forgotten. Oh, so we might know that Grandma knows more. Grandma might know more about it. Okay, so we'll find out um, tomorrow. Speak to you later. Bye.